where the past comes alive. Stella Nickel. First poisoned her husband, then when she thought she'd gotten away with murder, Nickel tried it again on a complete stranger. In the Seattle suburb of Auburn, Washington, a local bank manager named Sue Snow went into her bathroom to finish getting ready for work. A few minutes later, her teenage daughter found her collapsed on the floor and called 911. Within 10 minutes of the phone call, they had her on a helicopter to the medical center. I mean, it was that quick, and they were all mystified. They, you know, tried to work miracles, but there was nothing they could do. An autopsy was ordered by the King County Medical Examiner. The assistant to the medical examiner is one of the small percentage of the population that can smell the bitter almond smell of cyanide. And she made the incision, and this faint odor wafted uh, into her nose. And she said, I smell almonds. Could it be? It was a very weird thing to go through, this idea that anything that we're taking, we're drinking, you know, this water, anything could be poisoned, you know? And anybody could do it anonymously. There was somebody out there that had put cyanide, you know, in, a, in, in headache remedies to kill somebody. And one woman said that she had seen that news coverage and she was worried about her husband. The woman was Stella Nickel. Her husband, Bruce, had died a week before Sue Snow. They had told her at the time of the autopsy of, at his death that he had died of emphysema, but she didn't believe it. And she said, I have a bottle of Excedrin in my house with that same lot number that Sue Snow had. I think you need to come out here and check this out. Out of all of Seattle, all of the bottles out there that had cyanide in them, one woman has two bottles in her house that she says she bought at two different places at two different times. What are the odds of that? The coroner reopened the file on Bruce's death. Bruce was buried and gone. And he just wanted to putter around the house and work on their mobile home and, uh, you know, ride their Goldwing uh, motorcycles. That's all he wanted to do. You know, call his friends on the CB. I mean, that was their culture. That was their life. And Stella wanted nightlife. He needed to find some way to get the world to notice that he had died of poisoning. She needed to prove that it was an accidental death to get that extra money. She needed someone else to die. Only then could she get authorities to re-examine Bruce's death. So she filled three more bottles with cyanide and put them back on drugstore shelves. For months, Stella refused repeated requests to take a polygraph test. They kept asking her, take one. You know, it'll clear you, it'll exonerate you. And she would always say, I'm sick, I don't feel good. You know, I love Bruce too much. It'll hurt, you know, too much to relive it. You're making me live his death all over again. Cindy Hamilton was a younger version of her mother in nearly every way. They had this odd sort of mother-daughter relationship where it's friend and friend kind of relationship and not mother and daughter. And so they would talk about, you know, the different men they were with, you know, and what they did with them and all this kind of... Uh, gossipy kind of talk. Cindy Hamilton, Stella's 26-year-old daughter by her first marriage. After the polygraph, after Stella came home and told Cindy, hey, I failed that polygraph, I think Cindy got scared and realized, you know something, I'm not going down with her. I'm going to go talk to what I know. And she did. The, the turning point that she says kept clicking in her mind over and over was a conversation she had with her mother right after Bruce died. And that was when, when Stella showed up at the friend's house, Cindy was there, and she said, Bruce is dead. And Cindy said, the, the murder of Bruce Nickel was a perfect crime. I mean, Stella got rid of her husband, no problem. Uh, she just didn't get the money she wanted. In her greed for an extra $100,000 insurance payoff, Stella Nickel tried to get away with murder a second time and fail. I guess murder sometimes is a gamble, and Stella threw the dice a second time to try to get that extra cash, and that was her biggest mistake. 